a court wasn't the last place we saw these stars. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 pre-fame appearances on Law & Order. For this list, we're looking at the most interesting Law & Order guests who are now big stars in their own right. We're basing our choices on a mix of fun roles, number of appearances, and how strange each character is compared to the actor's modern image. These parts can be pretty important to their episodes, so a spoiler alert is now in effect. That afternoon, he'd gone out to run some errands, and when he didn't come back, I called the police. They said I had to wait 48 hours. Which precinct? You don't believe me? Number 10, Jessica Chastain, Law & Order Trial by Jury. Blythe Cotton also lived at the Winslow. Wojciech's Playground. March of last year, she took off, leaving five months to go on her lease. Rather than following crime investigations, Trial by Jury was a Law & Order series that focused on the actual court proceedings. This show gave a young Jessica Chastain her first recurring role on TV, after one-off bits on ER and Veronica Mars. You found me. Everyone's worried about you. Are my parents here? Chastain played Assistant District Attorney Sigrun Borg, who worked directly with the Bureau Chiefs on three episodes. Jessica brought a natural charisma and a bit of humor to what could have been a bland role. Sadly, this spinoff only lasted one season, and Chastain would wait about five years until big breaks in The Help and The Tree of Life. Number 9. Rooney Mara, Law & Order Special Victims Unit Long before her turn in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Rooney Mara's career started with the Special Victims Unit. As Jessica DeLay, Rooney delivered a tear-jerking performance as the target of a violent kidnapping. However, Jessica gave her a real chance to stretch her acting chops, since the character was secretly bullying overweight teens. The final result is this right here. A beautiful young girl who hates fat people. Stop it, please! Because she used to be one herself. Stop! This kind of duality in a role would help her shine early in her career. And her older sister Kate would make her own debut on the original Law & Order before an appearance on SVU as well. Rooney's more complex character has stood out in the long run as an impressive gig from a great actress. I couldn't stand the sight of him. But I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Number 8. Mahershala Ali, Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Just ask my lawyer when she gets here. So you're refusing to cooperate? You're wasting your time. Long before his major roles and Oscars, Mahershala Ali had a 2009 guest role on SVU. Ali dominated the screen as ex-convict Mark Foster, who became the focus of a new investigation. His role as Foster kept us guessing, as he tried to question the detective's own motives. You got a short fuse. <laughs> My fuse is plenty long. You should see it. Plus, Ali got a couple of moments to play a truly sinister villain before the episode wrapped up. Given his range of work dating back to 2002, Mahershala was a pro by his time on Law & Order. Though he was years off from House of Cards and Moonlight, Ali's acting here already showed the same promise. I didn't feel the urge for a long time. Until I lost my job. Number 7. Ellen Pompeo, Law & Order Please find me, Dad. You have to find him. Ellen Pompeo's tenure on Grey's Anatomy has defined her career, but Law & Order helped accelerate her trajectory. Pompeo made her first TV appearance as an attack survivor named Jenna. Though the role largely involved pleading with detectives, Ellen subtly offered hints towards her character's nefarious intentions. Now why did you go and say that? Don't you see what they're doing? They think Daddy's responsible. Whatever my mom told you, he had a good job. She later played a victim's sister in a season 10 episode as well. And this allowed Pompeo a dual role as a potential target and a suspect, at a time when she had almost no on-screen experience. While these toxic characters have become less typical for her, they did give an early glimpse at Pompeo's depth of talent. I am sorry. And if I could have changed anything, I would have. Number 6. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Law & Order Law & Order was one of the first places to capture Philip Seymour Hoffman's talent as a 20-something actor. Order! Hey, don't be stupid, okay? Don't be dead. His rowdy drug dealer Stephen was hard to like, especially with his smug attitude. But as Stephen faced charges in court with his friends, Hoffman would transform into an angry, terrifying monster. Do you hear me? 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 I want you to know exactly what you did. Philip's roller coaster of energy was a gripping showcase over a decade before Hoffman's acclaimed roles in Capote and The Master. Plus, his character's nerdy lawyer was played by none other than an up-and-coming Samuel L. Jackson. Fine, it'll fall into for what it's worth and I'll bury it. 
I'll be with my client. Hoffman was the highlight of the episode, though, as he continuously pushed people's buttons. Number five, Claire Danes, Law and Order. You continue to see Julian. I had to. I needed him. Claire Danes has had a strong TV career, with leading roles in both My So-Called Life and Homeland. That's because Danes started on television at age 13 as Tracy Brandt in Law & Order's third season. In a case that surrounded a slain photographer, Tracy's relationship with him slowly became the episode's focus. Though Danes began fairly chipper in the appearance, her gradual breakdown had us in tears. He said we'd always be together and I was gonna be a big mom. The salacious nature of the man's photos also upped the emotional impact of her already sad story. And for a brief appearance from an otherwise first-time actress, Claire gives a lot in meager time. I didn't mean to do it. After what he said about mom, he made fun of me. He said I wasn't pretty enough. Number four, Jim Gaffigan, Various. Jim Gaffigan's biggest claim to fame has been his comedy, but he's landed over a hundred acting credits over the years. In fact, the funny man has appeared five times on various Law & Order shows, all as different characters. Gaffigan has played both a weird crematorium worker and a worrisome boss on Criminal Intent. So you got nothing to hide. You're a man with nothing to hide. Well, then I'll be straight with you. Please. Though he played a helpful citizen on one season of the original series, he returned to play a prime suspect years later. I got some pizzas. You're Johnson, you're under arrest for murder. That's a wrap. Despite his comedic energy, Gaffigan's part as a clown had a shockingly dark edge that was hard to watch. I'm innocent. Now, if you don't mind, I'll get Not so fast there, Chuckles. Those same witnesses filed complaints about the touchy-feely games that you play with those kids. Whatever the role, it was impressive that Gaffigan was able to snag so many parts across different franchises. Number three, Amanda Seyfried, Law & Order Special Victims Unit. I was walking to the bus stop and they grabbed me. Why is everybody telling lies about me? God, I just wish you'd all just leave me alone. Around the release of her breakout in Mean Girls, Amanda Seyfried also starred with the Special Victims Unit. Seyfried was Tandy McCann, a victim found tied up alive in a house. Her portrayal was especially powerful since Tandy made up details and got arrested herself. My dad's got a bad heart. And he said if I said anything, then my dad would lose his job and his insurance. Amanda balanced conflict and eventual sorrow that came with the story, as her real harasser's case got thrown out due to her falsified statements. I did a terrible thing. I'm sorry. And Seyfried's teary-eyed admission in the closing moments of the case proved why she'd earn everything from Mamma Mia to Les Miserables as her career went on. I'm sorry, Tandy. Don't be. You're right. I don't regret it. Number two, John Krasinski, Law & Order Criminal Intent. In the midst of a conspiracy that involved a basketball team, one player was pushing his teammates to sell drugs. Though this sounded like a part for a gritty actor, it would be filled by none other than John Krasinski. I didn't actually see him selling weed, but everybody knows he was doing it. The adolescent criminal named Jace Gleasing got violent with his teammates and started to sweat when the detectives started noticing his expensive gear. We gotta get home, because we got a midterm tomorrow. Krasinski delivered an undeniably grounded performance and committed to the character's unlikable qualities. And this was just a year before he would become famous as the hilarious Jim on The Office. Seriously? You're gonna set him back? Uh, yeah. That's the safest part of a car. In the event of a crash, the driver always protects his side first. So regardless of the relatable people he would take off with, Krasinski still gave us shivers on criminal intent. You get the rock, you dish to Kyle or me. We clear? You know, John Krasinski was busy before he was famous because he was also on our list of actors you forgot were on CSI. Our top pick has definitely come a long way since his TV bit part days, so let's look through some honorable mentions before we see our number one pre-fame appearance on Law & Order. I was assigned to share quarters with Lieutenant Hagen. She was a very capable officer. Off-duty capable of what? I don't understand the question, sir. Did Gabriel mess with you? Is that why you don't like him? I take care of myself. I don't like him because she lets him beat her when she's all pregnant like that. He, he cares about what I want. Anyway, no one can touch that money. It's in my trust fund until I'm 30 years old. Your husband's got two names. You sure you don't want to amend that? 
My name is Jana Jansen, formerly Jana Tobias of Cedar Creek, Arkansas. Psychiatry is a corrupt instrument of social control. And no offense, Ms. Novak, but you're a lawyer. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Adam Driver, Various. How many times do I have to tell you guys, you're supposed to feed the rats on schedule or they get sick? An overly aggressive lab technician was the perfect fit for Adam Driver when he appeared on Law & Order in 2010. With virtually no credits to his name, Driver was able to show off his penchant for tantrums without being the bad guy. He would return on Special Victims Unit as a creepy stalker, whose hidden cameras both complicated and helped solve the case in unusual ways. Oh man, you were rubbing your mother's feet? Thursday night at 7.06. These cameras really are for security. But it was Driver's physical, angry outbursts that would show us just how intense he could be before his appearance on Girls. These acting moments have become retroactively more entertaining given his over-the-top Kylo Ren in Star Wars. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.